going on, everybody? My name is Will, and I am the host for the A's Podcast, where we talk all things art, culture, and entertainment, but more specifically, pop culture entertainment. And boy, howdy. It's, uh, it's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> Since that last episode where I'm just like, oh yeah, uh, for sure. We're, we are for sure back. We're for sure back. I'm definitely gonna, gonna get the guys, and it's gonna be a whole thing. And, and I, was, I was entirely wrong. Uh, I thought I was telling the truth. Turned out I did what uh, we Americans call lying. So that's what that was. But how have you been? You know, are you taking care of yourself? Are you are you drinking water? Are you doing good? I I, I missed you. Um, where have I been? Life. Uh, mostly living life. I've I've been doing okay. You know, I've been working with my human adult job. Um, I've been figuring out what I want to do as far as making content. I, I have a project coming down the pipeline, which I casted in April, and uh, that cast is finally slowly getting itself avengered together as I figure out times for people to come in and send me their lines. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm dipping my toe into the, the directing thing, so that's, that's interesting. And then just got to, whoa. A, a video kicked in in the middle of me recording, but anyways, yeah, uh, I, I've had, you know, I've been going out in the world, you know, since I'm vaccinated, I've been dating, helping family, um, hanging out with friends, just, just enjoying life, you know, trying to find a lot of different opportunities. To, uh, uh, I got a trainer. I have a gym membership. A lot happened in the past month, actually, a lot of different things, uh, good things though. So yeah, trying to get myself back in the fit and fighting form for for hot boy summer. So that's where I've been. But we, uh, since it's been another month, maybe longer, we we have a fair amount to catch up on. So let's get right to it. Um, let's let's do our big two, and and wow. So I've I haven't been around for a lot of news. So I never did talk about uh the falcon and winter soldier finale and and the fact that captain america 4 was announced following so we'll, we'll start with the stuff with the big two uh we got a little bit of big two news that i want to discuss and then a, a lot of non that a lot of interesting other shows that i did want to discuss in movies and things that have come out um so let's start with marvel Oof, boy knuckles so let's start with marvel we got falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, this is going to be a full spoiler review from my perspective about what I recall from the end of the finale of The Falcon and The Winter Soldier. Uh, so, full spoilers in 3, 2, 1. I like it. I really appreciate Sam coming into his own. Uh, I will say episodes, I believe, 6 and 7 are still probably my favorite. Is it 6? Six is the one with uh, where they fight and he gets his wings ripped off. And a lot of it is just uh, Bucky and Sam training. So I really like that. But as far as the finale goes, like the actual. Um, as time has gone on, I've, like, I, I think there are a lot of elements there that really work. I think Sam is Captain America. Uh, this is one of the most screen accurate comic book costumes I've, I, I've ever seen. You know, it's transition from the page to the screen is damn near seamless they they did a phenomenal job with the costuming uh, however uh, I, it does make me realize that not everything is built for live action and that conceptually that suit is really unattractive uh it's it's really high quality it's a well-made suit but in terms of design it's not a very good it's it's not a it's it's like it's too white in different places, there's not a good color balance between the red, white, and blue, I'll say. And then just kind of the way that the helmet and neck piece is, is designed, um, I don't think looks particularly good on an actual person in comparison to a comic book character. Uh, but I don't, I don't blame the costume people for that. They did a phenomenal do job transitioning it. Um, he has some really big shoulder pads. He really fills it out. Uh, and Sam kind of coming into his, his own as is, is, is a different Captain America. I really like the speech that he gave in that episode. I like the fact that John Walker 
is shown to be a little bit more complex. A lot of people want him to be a villain. I don't understand that. He's an anti-hero. Uh, he's a very good one. Um, you know, he's morally dubious. He 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 represents a lot of the, uh, I think a lot of the different perspectives that a veteran might have in America. There's a lot of commentary there. But I really liked his character, kind of giving a moment where you see him not so much full redemption, but but showcasing that yeah, he's 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 well intentioned, if not woefully misguided. Like yeah, he's not fit to be Captain America, but he's not like a god awful person. You know, he's complicated. And I think that's good. And I think Wyatt Russell really solves that right there. Uh, I will say, I wish there was more for White Wolf, you know, for Bucky to do, the Winter Soldier. Uh, Carly's storyline, I'll say, is probably wasted potential. Marvel is kind of 0 for 2 on these TV show finales. Like, they got really good shows, really good concepts, really nice executions, all up until, like, the last episode. <laughs> Um, I don't know what it is about these finales. It's, it's like a weird thing with tide. We're like, I, the, the, the pacing changes, um, you know, motivation, like things are, are incomplete. And a lot of it, I kind of blame on the pandemic. So I think probably after Loki, hopefully they, they, they're while they're, uh, I think they wrapped on Hawkeye and they're finishing up Miss Marvel now, uh, before, oh yeah. And we got some. More news uh, tied into that. But as far as talking to Winter Soldier goes, it, it ended pretty solidly, if not weak in a couple areas. I, I didn't realize that Carly's character is supposed to be like 19 or 17. I thought she was just a young adult because that's what the actress read to me. Is it, so every time they call her kid, I got really, really confused. So I'm like, what are you talking about? This girl's like 22. And the actual actor is like 23. So I wasn't that far off. I'm like, what? That looks like a young lady that's supposed to that's supposed to be a teenager and so i didn't they didn't really point out um yeah Car carly's storyline could have been a lot stronger uh i i do think we should have had an episode that just kind of focused more on the flag smashers so we could understand their their philosophy a little bit better and be a little bit more they'd be a little bit more engaging i believe as as antagonists um so a lot of the the emotionality that anthony mackie was trying to deliver as sam for carly's character i just think cut rung kind of hollow as did some of his efforts to, to keep her safe um sharon being revealed as a stockbroker people called that really early on and i'm kind of mixed on it not a huge fan of it uh i think it's it's another case of one of those things of uh the mystery middle for you have such a drastic change in a character from what we saw before that it doesn't exactly sit that well with me. Goodness, yawning a lot. Um, Yeah, it doesn't sit that well with me, but I am certainly curious to see where they're going to take it, probably in Cap 4. Um, otherwise, it, it was okay. Uh, seeing the U.S. agent suit was really, really cool. Uh, I hope we get to see a lot more of that character to be in Thunderbolts. Uh, Probably in Cap Four too. I feel like there's you, you can't just leave John Walker there. You gotta you know tease him out. Well, uh, maybe, maybe we got a cool new title change: Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Apparently, they were going for Captain America and the White Wolf, which I like that too. Uh, I, I think Bucky is is due for a, a title change because he's not really like he's he's very much reformed from the Winter Soldier, and I do. I, I wish we got a little bit more time with Bucky too to kind of balance out. Because the show wound up being very, very focused on the front-loaded half of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You know, it was a lot of more Falcon than Winter Soldier. Not that we didn't get any Winter Soldier development, but he, uh, Bucky didn't have, we didn't see as much of Bucky's arc as I think we maybe could have. I think that's maybe where an episode, an extra episode could have come and we get to see a little bit more of a Bucky coming to terms with, with some of the stuff he's felt as well as uh, stuff with the Flag Smash. Otherwise, um, effects were good. Fight choreography was pretty darn good for this. They're they're getting better, uh, project by project with this. So, overall, I'm I'm pretty satisfied. I'm I'm happy with it. I'm very interested to see where they're gonna go with Captain America four. I really do actually hope this this go around. They do do Serpent Society. I think in the past, Kevin Feige said that you know they haven't really ruled it out because that if you recall back when Civil War was actually announced, they they said it was Captain America. The Serpent Society, which is a really, really interesting idea. 
and I think you could just kind of roll that over into Anthony Mackie's Captain America. Um, yeah, I, I say do that, and, and I'm curious to see what role that the power broker will have in all of that, as well as uh, U.S. Agent's boss's character, Julie Louise Dreyfus's character. Um, yeah, so that's that's all my thoughts about Captain America and the Winter Soldier and Cap 4. Uh, I'm definitely gonna, excited for Cap 4. See what they do with it and see where they go. So what else do we have that's Marvel related? We got a trailer for Loki. And I'm indifferent. I'm s I don't like Loki as a character. I don't really care for him. I was on Tumblr when his fandom peaked, so that kind of created a disdain for me. Nothing against Tom Hiddleston. I just don't find him particularly engaging. But you know, this the show is the, an opportunity for, for to change my mind. Uh, I like Owen Wilson. Tom Hiddleston is a talented actor. I just don't understand the fervor for his character. But, uh, you know, I'm going to watch it when it airs in June. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be open-minded about it. Uh, we did get a Phase 4 trailer from Marvel that apparently was, like, marketing a speech that Stan Lee did uh, that was inspired by Martin Luther King, which I'm like, damn, Disney, you... Do a cold ass piece for that one, but um, you know, it is what it is. And we got some new titles, we get, as well as uh, release dates. Um, I believe Guardians of the Galaxy three is twenty twenty three, May twenty twenty three. Uh, Captain Marvel two is officially titled The Marvels, which has me very excited because while I could give a damn about Carol Danvers, I am a huge fan of uh, Monica Rambeau and Kamala Khan. Um, more so, you know, the latter than the former. Like, I, I've always respected Monica's character, but Kamala, big Kamala fan, love Kamala Khan. Uh, we actually got our first look at her costume for the Miss Marvel show, and I'm kind of fifty fifty on it. Um, I I wish it was a little. I actually wish it was a little less stylistic. I think the Avengers video game does a fantastic job at adapting that costume in a way that's faithful to the comics of it originally like being a modified bathing suit um maybe we'll see that in the show but the the one we got you know with the i kind of don't like the attached shoulder pads um but otherwise you know it's it's kind of like how spider-man is like you you need a suit that looks like he made it so i'm curious to see what that one's going to look like for her and um we which i know they have the one of her doing captain marvel with the mohawk which is also from the comics if if I recall correctly, but her actual suit, eh, eh, I'm I'm fifty fifty. I'm I'm excited. Um, a lot of it looks really good. It's just like tiny little details. I feel the same about Spider Man's suit since Homecoming. It's just certain specific details that I would change a little bit, and it's like almost perfect. It's almost perfect. <coughs> but her suit looks good. The Marvels, uh, I'm really curious to see what that's going to be like and how Miss Marvel is going to lead into that. Uh, I'm excited to see that Nia DaCosta is directing. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I think I'll get a better idea once Candyman comes out later this year and once I actually sit down and watch, I think it's Little Woods with Tessa Thompson. I need to watch that because that's her other, I think that's her directorial debut. But uh, I'm certainly interested. They got a new director and a new writing team. So I think we're going to get, I'm hoping we get a story that's a little bit more focused on Monica kind of feeling abandoned by Carol and maybe that kind of contrast with Kamala's fandom girlness to, to Carol, like fan worship to Carol as a character. And, and I want Brie Larson to kind of have fun with, with this too. I, I think the writing of her is... Carol hasn't really left a lot of, not a lot of room, uh, a wiggle room for her to really kind of flex and have fun with it. Um, not saying she didn't have fun, but I want to, I, I want people to like Carol and, and I want to like Carol more than I do right now. I'm just kind of, yeah, eh, eh, it's just me, very mad at her, but you know, I, I, I know Brie Larson can act. She's a great, she's a great actress, talented actress. Um, was she my first pick for Carol? Not really, but you know. Uh, take what I take, you know, work with what we got. So we got that. Uh, I believe that's July of next year. Uh, the interesting one. No, no, I think that's November. 
because the one before that, I believe, is June or July is a Black Panther 2, which officially is titled Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Uh, they're really taking that marketing and rolling with it. I am thoroughly curious what they're going to do with this movie. I think everybody is because we know they're not recasting T'Challa, uh, which is which is very much a, a strong, you know, decision. Um, that's a strong decision because not like actors don't get cast and recast in roles, especially in like but consistent universes. But I think I guess after Hulk and Rhodey, they they're trying to kind of stick with the same people, um, based off of like fan reception and stuff like that, and how well the movies and shows and everything perform. But I I'm thoroughly curious with where the story is going to go. Uh, you know, I I think even up until we get a trailer we hear anything about production there's just going to be speculation about like you know who's going to be the black Panther. what what is the story going to focus on uh is is namor showing up? um i saw somebody recently who's like their fan they fan casted joe taslim who played sub-zero in the mortal kombat movie to play him and i'm like that's 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 fan- that's yeah that'd be fire joe taslim is namor perfect cast that'd be phenomenal uh watching him you know, go and blow for blow with, with whoever the next Black Panther is. Or Panthers, it could be more than one, who knows. Um, I think what they might do is maybe tap into the, not the Forest of the Dead, like Kingdom of the Dead, the Necropolis stuff, and maybe pull an old Black Panther. Uh, which, I, I think that that's from the comics. Them, you know, the contrast of the Golden City. For, I, I, and I think that fits with the theme of, like, Wakanda forever. And and T'Challa speaking that, you know, in my culture that death is is not an ending point. So I, I feel that um involving Necropolis and the, the city of the dead versus the golden city uh would be would be uh, really interesting narratively. So I'm I'm curious how Kugler has worked around it. Apparently apparently Martin Freeman has read the script and it's you know, mind blown, so you know, we, we, we got that, uh, and we got, and people are guessing that for Guardians 3 that Drax is going to die, which I'm very curious of. Uh, so yeah, um, I don't know, what, what are y'all's thoughts about these new Marvel titles, and what are you expecting from the movies? Uh, next up, we got a trailer for Venom, Let There Be Carnage. I did a reaction to it. It looks like it exists. I have no emotions toward this movie at all. The original Venom, the best things about that movie are Tom Hardy as Venom and Eddie Brock. That's that's about it, really. Um, that and I guess the effects are, the effects are good. Uh, but other than that, you know, I walked out of the movie. I'm like, yeah, it was fine. It happened. Uh, it, it it certainly exists. But other than that, you know, I have no emotions towards it. And then I watched the trailer. I had no emotions towards it. I have no feelings whatsoever. Just pure ambivalence. Am I going to see it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm going to see it. But other than that, I don't know. I don't have any feelings. A lot of people are like, oh, this looks dope. Oh, this looks crazy. Um, No, nah, it, it, it looks like a movie. Uh, Venom sounds weird. I don't know what happened, but, you know, it... it I don't know. His voice sounds different. It sounded better in the first one. Now his voice is like a lot more deeper and gravelier and I, I'm not digging it as much. Maybe it's just a, a scene thing or what we see in the trailer. Or it's not completely edited, but it's like, um, you know, who comes breakfast? I'm like, eh, it doesn't sound like you had it perfect in the first movie. What, what happened, Tom? How did, how did they direct you to do it different? You know, punk some how, Mrs. Chard. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> Uh, Woody Harrelson doesn't have that goofy ass dog shit wig anymore, which makes me happy. So he kind of looks like a person. Um, Woody Harrelson deserves better. You know, he's an extremely talented actor, but and he's he's not a bad pick for Carnage. It's just like something. Uh, I, I I'm I'm curious. Like I'll watch it. You know, Andy Serkis is directing it, so I'm expecting the cinematography and the effects to be a bit of a step up. Because he he has a good eye for those, but other than that, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the hell is going on. People are saying, you know, there's like they're trying to Sony's trying to backdoor their way into the MCU. 
It's just very meh. Just yeah, whatever. Okay. Um. I don't know. I don't have a lot of thoughts on it. I'm just kind of leave it, leave that where it is. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Just let me know your thoughts in in the comments and everything. And uh, last thing, I've been watching the Modoc show. It's funny. I like it. I enjoy it. It's it's interesting. It holds my attention. Patton Oswalt is a fantastic Modoc. If they ever, I hope they do him in a movie someday. <laughs> I think it'd be a really interesting uh, casting choice. If they could just use Pat over again because he's perfect. He does a phenomenal job, and, and the rest of the cast is really good too. It's a funny show. It, it actually has some audible laughs going for it. So, uh, yeah, that's all for Marvel. Let's go over and see what the direct competition has to say over at DC. So evidently, the Green Lantern Corps found its Guy Gardner in actor Jeremy Irvine, who he definitely has the face of a Guy Gardner. Um, but why Guy? I know one person that likes Guy Gardner. Because, like, Guy Gardner is just such a big sack of dicks like he's he's meant to be unlikable it's, it's part of a character trait of him so why pick him i don't i don't understand um that's not it's, it's not who i really would be interested in following it makes me less interested watching the show because it's just like oh no it's okay we got a douchebag as the main lead it's like i don't really want to watch that then i'm not that Interested. Oh god, he was in the he was in the Stonewall movie? Oh shit. Oh the rolling oh god. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. I uh, um uh, I, I think that's the bigger thing. Like Jeremy Irvine's casting, I don't I don't know much about him as an actor, so I can't speak to his talent. I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure he'll get the job done. But the Green Lantern Corps show is a cool idea, but it would have been cool if you did like which I'm sure it's probably going to be like an anthology and there's going to be a bunch of other lanterns like Jessica Cruz and Kilowog, but it's like, why guy? You know, like everybody likes John. Pretty much everybody likes Hal. You know, Kyle is cool. Jessica, you could, you, you got an easy diversity hire with Jessica casting a Latina actress as a superhero. Don't know why people keep forgetting that that's like a really easy market to pick up on first one to have a really big spanish or latin american superhero but you just decide not to whatever um i don't know i'll i'll give it a try but no no major feelings for it um i feel like we have some other dc news too uh i know one thing is this whole black superman thing uh so i have a controversial take. I have a controversial feeling about Black Superman. Oh boy! And and then what? Because they put out a whole article about why they're choosing to do. To be good. Lord. Sorry. So they they put out this article. I think it was Variety or THR, one of them. I can't remember. Um, put out an article like do. I think they did an interview just talking about like why they decided on a Black Superman. Uh, and here's my thing. You can do a black Superman, uh, despite the fact that one, there already are a couple black people that fit that moniker. You have Valzad, um, you know, Calvin Ellis, uh, you have icon, although I'd be kind of antsy on that cause he came during slave time. So I'd, I'd probably bump that up a couple centuries. Um, if you wanted to do that, which they should have, they, you know, people point out, Hey, do icon, Hey, do Valzad, Hey, do Calvin Ellis. But from the looks of it, it looks like they're trying to do Clark Kent, but black. And I'm sorry, that actually breaks my suspension of disbelief. <laughs> I'm not saying there aren't black people in Kansas. Um, I'm also hearing that it's supposed to be a period piece. I'm just, I'm not interested in seeing black struggle movies i'm tired i'm very very tired of the the battle that we fight as black people constantly coming back to systemic racism like as much as i like the messaging and storytelling in captain america that would at least makes a little bit of sense for a character that like 
that has to do with America. Not addressing the racial aspect of America would be rather negligent. Superman is a, is a symbol for a lot of things, and one of them, yes, does include America, but he's not exclusively an American symbol. That's why we can have a British man that plays Cap, uh, you know, Superman, and we have, and Henry Cavill. You know, there's no real limit on that. And the color of Superman doesn't really matter. My thing is, you can have a black Superman. I don't think you can have a black Clark Kent. That's that's just me. If you're going with the original storyline from the comics, um, but if you're if you're gonna do Clark Kent, but change it to fit the cultural lifestyles of black people regardless of time period one i don't it i don't think it's going to connect i doubt it's going to connect what i think they should have done is gone for a modern immigrant's tale and had a mexican american Clark kent you know maybe his birth name was uh was initially carla like having a mexican farmer that immigrated or or a South American farmer that immigrated to America, a land of opportunity, trying to lay low in Kansas and Smallville, a town in in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. That makes a lot of sense. You know, a kid growing up feeling different all the time and ostracized for it in the middle of the fucking backwoods. You're, you're like a Mexican kid in a small podunk town with like not more than a couple thousand people where everybody knows everybody, your struggles are going to be different. Your stories are going to be different. I'm not saying you can't do that with black people, but in terms of like cultural relevancy, our stories are a little bit more city than, than country. You know, the, the people that are the farmers, you know, I'm, there are black farmers. There are farmers of every race and creed. But I think in terms of cultural rel- relatability, it'd be a lot more believable If it was somebody who was Hispanic or Latin American, I think that would make way more sense. And it's entirely missed opportunity. And plus the fact that Clark Kent is an immigrant from a planet, you know, that, that uh, of essentially, you know, mass genocide on a planetary scale escape. Wow. Escaping from one home, going to another where he got adopted in a new land by a wholesome family. Doesn't that resonate? It's so easy. It fucking writes itself to the point where they kind of did it in Gods and Monsters, but that was Zod's kid. You know, this would be very, very interesting. It's such a missed opportunity. And I don't think black people would take, even if it's a period piece, I think that, I think the period piece aspect actually makes it worse because right now we're tired of seeing black struggle, no matter how well acted it is, no matter how well written it is. I hate that that's the primary source of the narrative. I didn't like it in Lovecraft Country. Then they're doing it again for them. Now they have another show called, they have another adaptation of the Underground Railroad. Can we stop with the fucking narratives that are always focused about our race is the only thing that we have to fight against in terms of our media and entertainment. We have so many more other interesting stories to tell. That's why I'm excited for Children of Blood and Bone. Like, is there a racial aspect to it? Sure, there probably is. Fine. But also, black people doing magic. That's interesting. You know? The reason I go out and, and like, supported Little, that movie was fine. It was kind of mediocre. But you know what it was? It was a comedy. It was a simple comedy about a bossy lady turning into a little girl, the hijinks she gets into, and learning to treat people better. It's a simple narrative. And they happen to be black. Congrats. You did it. It's funny. Enough. It works. Like... One of the reasons I love the photograph. It's a simple movie. It's a simple movie. The conversations are relatable to black people. There's not, there, there's like, in it, there's, it doesn't lean into stereotypes that I feel are harmful or damaging. They talk how I expect people in that age bracket to talk. The, the, you know, romance felt authentic and genuine. I like these stories that depict us as with narrative that are beyond just our skin tone and Ta-Nehisi Coates is writing it. And I think he's a very smart man, a very brilliant man in terms of his level of insight. And I'm just worried that it's going to come back to race because he's really good at talking about it. You know, I'm not saying he's not creative. You know, I've, I've read his, the first part of his run on black Panther. 
I've read a lot of his run on Intergalactic Empire, which is about to end in the next couple of months before it gets a new writer in August. So I need to catch up on that. But it's just like, you know, him bringing in stuff like the Moors in space and making this kingdom and everything. And just like, uh, I'm sure Krypton is going to be like a, a Afrofuturistic utopia that somehow would get destroyed by the evil representation of white supremacy and it's going to be fucking brainiac or some shit. I just, I, I'm not, I'm not, and from what I've seen, black people online just kind of agree. We're not interested in black Clark Kent. We don't really care. Now, if you're doing Val Zod, um, I think it's Val Zod. No, Calvin Ellis. Calvin Ellis is like president black Superman. That's really interesting. Having to save the world, but also represent um, the quote unquote freest country in the world. That's interesting. Superman meets Barack Obama. That's interesting. I don't give a fuck <laughs> about Black Clark Kent. Black Superman, who's also the president. Okay. You have a very interesting story. It's one of those things where the 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 less general it is and the more specific it is, the more interesting that character can wind up being. And simultaneously, the more relatable he can end up being. You can make somebody really relatable with some with by having difficult decisions in their life with things that I can't relate to in the slightest. I could probably relate a lot easier to President Black Superman than I could to Black traditional Clark Kent. It just doesn't work for me, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to give it a chance. I want to have hope for it. But, like, me already kind of being in the camp that Superman is kind of a boring character. Now, let me digress. I'm not saying that Superman, all of Superman's stories are boring. No, actually the opposite. Superman has some really, really interesting stories. I think he can be, he's a, he's a simple character. Because he's simple, I think that also kind of makes him boring from jump. But also, if you're a good writer, you can flip a simple and basic character to be really, really interesting. He's just like, he's a nice guy with all the powers that wants to help people. He's a very, very simple character. Simple can equate to boring really fast when it's poorly written. But when it's well written, you can make some marvelous, fantastic stories like All-Star Superman or basically the, the you know, whole Superman the Animated Series is a, does a phenom- phenomenal job at that. Um, uh, Superman Earth-1 is my favorite interpretation of Superman, you know? Uh, I spent a couple of days and watched like three Superman movies that they had on Max. I'm like, oh shit, I haven't seen these. It was like All Star and uh, two others. And I'm just like, yeah, these are really great Superman stories. Superman vs. the Elite. Uh, and I forget what the other one was. But yeah, they were all great Superman stories. He's a simple character. So it, it's a case where I'm just like, do I think he's boring? Yeah, he's a boring character, but he has good writers a lot of the time that help elevate him to be interesting. Now, I think the people around Superman are probably a little bit more interesting than him but I also don't particularly care to see a series about Jimmy Olsen or, you know, Lois Lane because they're people, you know? Superman's son? All right, give me that. We got Super Sons. That's an interesting-ass book. You know, him and Damian Wayne, seeing the differences in characters, but also the thing they have in, in uh, the same or uh, similar to their parents. Those two are, I think their kids are more interesting than they are, and their family members are more interesting than, like, the actual characters but yeah uh black superman uh it can work but you know missed opportunity should have been latin american you dropped the ball on that wb you're the i i think in trying to 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 pander to a black audience and uh and have like this uber look upable black superhero not saying the black people don't like superman but I think they missed a prime opportunity to do a really, really interesting story. You know, that's my thing is, is you, you, ver- you it, it feels more vet- virtue signally because we wanted to do a, a black Superman, do icon, you know, we have, we literally have one from a black creator instead of going through all the extra effort of being like, well, what if we took Clark Kent and made him black? There's an Asian American Superman or an Asian Superman. There's Chinese Superman in new Superman. Why not do him? That'd be interesting. Do Chinese Superman. Do Latin American Superman. We have a black Superman. We have Icon. We have Steel. We have Calvin Ellis. We don't need a black Clark Kent. That's my big thing. We don't care about black Clark Kent. 
I, I can't name any black people that are like, oh yeah, I want black Clark Kent. That's who I'll relate to, you know, Com coming from someone whose town isn't huge, but not everybody knows everybody. There's like, I don't, I don't think the, the black people that live in those small towns are like, oh yeah, I want a black Clark. I want a Clark Kent that looks like me. No, I want a hero that looks like me, but maybe not a Clark Kent that looks like me. You can still, re you can still relate to some to heroes that aren't the same race as you. And and I just kind of feel bad for Henry Cavill now. I don't know what the hell they're doing with him. Um he he definitely deserves just another crack at Superman. I feel like his was like bad writing and bad directing. Um you know. Sometimes I do wish we got a Man of Tomorrow movie, but it is what it is. Uh, leave that where it is. Um so kind of last on the superhero front before we get into some movie stuff uh invincible season one wrapped and they've also been renewed through season three so seasons two and three have been confirmed by amazon after the first season was just a smash hit and and let me tell you boy how do full spoilers ahead for invincible that first season phenomenal <laughs> I think it was really strong. Uh, actually, so strong. In fact, this, this Invincible made me do something I don't think I've ever done for, for any other show, and that's made me go directly to the source material and, and read it and, and catch up and finish it. I, let's see, the finale was that Friday. Uh, the Tuesday after the finale aired, I had finished the entire series. I, I sat on my laptop and just scrolled through the entire 25 volume 144 issue series of invincible it is indeed one of the greatest superhero comics ever made and right now it's probably my one of my favorite superhero comics ever made um mark where he goes as a character is fascinating and I'm super duper intrigued into what they're kind of going to try and move around and condense from C four seasons, two and three. Um, God, that last episode was such a fucking heavy hitter. Uh, the train sequence, the, the, the fight between Omni man and invincible going through the uh, building. It, it, it played up a lot of elements from, you know, the fight from the comics, but the the ways that like Robert Kirkman changed things and and kind of is setting up a lot of story beats that are coming in the future that that are also from the comics. There's a lot of things coming from the comics, and also that's not even all of his villains. You know, there's a lot of shit coming that I'm really excited to see how they handle. Uh, like I'll just say this one word: conquest. Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah. Show was great. Voice acting was great. Uh, animation was pretty good for the most part. It didn't. There were a couple times where, like, I would notice the changes in animation style, but it, it never really bothered me. Um, I think the fight choreography in that show is very well handled in terms of animation. The voice direction is really well handled. The voice cast on that show can we, can we, you know, we gotta give him a hand because that that voice cast is is very very good. Um, we really have to give the flowers to to jk simmons because he's such a phenomenal talent god he's so good so damn good is uh is is omni man damn such a fantastic talent such a fantastic actor he's so damn good uh and, that, and that's not to discount uh you know sandra O oh and and um everyone else in the cast that does a, a great job there, there's a lot of life to these characters that feel like they're on their own but i do want to address is something that's been going around both regular discussions as well as like the Invincible fandom, which I guess I'm a part of now that I read through the whole shit. Um, it also, you know, God bless you, Robert Kirkman. You had a comic book series that ended, and that's why it's so damn good. Other than the fact that you have interesting characters. And Adam Eve gets really thick. You knew what you were doing. Um, but a lot of discourse about Amber and the differences between Amber in the comic and Amber in the show. Uh, and a lot of people don't like Amber in the show and, and f someone finally put more into words. I was listening to the team four star, uh, bento review that they did on their, uh, talk cast pod show. And, and I believe Kaiser Neko said it best, uh, talking about that. It's definitely a two way street and people kind of 
they don't like Amber, I think because she's holding Mark accountable and also because of the way that she phrased her, her knowledge of him being invincible. And, and not so much that he has priorities that aren't her, but also kind of the, the argument that Kaiser Neko was making that, um, yes, Amber does have some fault for staying in, in the relationship, despite the fact that she knew that he was invincible and it would be really hard for him to, to balance that. However, Mark also has to take responsibility for the fact that he, he reads superhero comics. He knows superheroes. His dad's a superhero. He's seen the effect that it has on his mom. So he should know better than anyone else that him being in a relationship while trying to be a superhero at his age with his level of responsibilities is irresponsible. It is. And he does need to take some response. He needs to, you know, take some shit for that. The same way that Amber is taking some shit for giving him shit of like, oh, you're never here. You're never around. Like Mark, you grew up in a house with somebody that was going to other worlds that your mom was probably stressed out, not knowing when your dad's coming back. You've seen her like stressed and freaked out. You saw it when your dad fucking got pummeled to bits, you know, by Red Rush before you, you knew all that shit. And people do, people don't like Amber's. There are some, you know, there's that small crowd of people that are like, ah, hey, we don't like Amber and they're just anti black or whatever. But that's, that's a small minority. But a lot of people just hate Amber. I think because we get Mark's perspective for the majority of the show. So we literally see what he's going through, but you got to think about from the other side too, of just like somebody that's constantly making promises that they can't keep constantly showing up extremely late. The relationship dynamic is all over the place. Um, they're just entirely unreliable. And at some point you kind of put two and two together. It's like, Oh shit, they're their superhero. But also that like, they didn't have enough trust in you to to like speak on it and they kind of there is a little bit of selfishness there of not well communicating with her and also the one arg like the argument that i don't see anyone seeing and i'm definitely biased here because i work with teenagers and i would rather work with teenagers than kids any day I've, I've worked with teenagers a lot especially recently teenagers do stupid shit especially in high school relationships So, like, whenever, you know, when Amber revealed that she knew he was invincible the entire time and people immediately got furious, he's like, oh, yeah, I've known for weeks. And I'm like, wow, she's pretty astute. It never bothered me. They're both at fault because they're both dumbass teenagers. Teenagers suck. Teenagers are dumb. And being a hormonal teenager in high school, you're not thinking logically. And yeah, I know people are going to be like, well, doesn't that kind of counter your argument about Mark? No. No, it doesn't. Because you still are able to be responsible. You're still making a choice. I can I can call you out for being a stupid teenager, but still hold you accountable for behaving stupidly. And fuck. Um, and this goes for both of them. You know, Amber, you got in a relationship with with a guy, but you stayed with him. You know, you did, you did stay, you gave multiple chances. I'm glad she did. Uh, and I'm curious to see where her story is going to go, given where Amber's story goes in the comics. I'm, I'm hoping they avoid, uh, I, I, well, there's something that happens with Amber and it's realistic, but I, I'm curious if they're going to address her or not. Um, and I guess it will kind of showcase for a parallel for something that happens significantly later to Mark. Uh, but no, it never, Amber's character never bothered me. I think both Amber and Mark are justified in being dumb teenagers making rash decisions out of love. Because, you know, when you care for somebody, sometimes you make irrational, neglectful decisions, especially when you're still in the middle of puberty and maturation. So, no, I don't hate Amber. I don't hate Amber. Amber's fine. You know? It's like, you you just got to take a step back in terms of perspective. And a lot of people compare it to the comic version, who's a lot more laid back like yeah I'll, I'll say this she's less sassy in the comics she's less of a smart ass but she's just kind of a regular hot girlfriend you know she, she's uh a little bit less you know she she confronts mark and she talks with mark and they engage um but also one of the things that that i kind of think is interesting about mark just as a character through both the show and the comic and as it continues one of mark's character attributes is actually that he's kind of stubborn 
which is interesting because I think it's the first time in a while I, like I'm looking at a character I'm like no this is like a like a a thing about you that continues for the rest of his life in all of his relationships you know both friendly and romantic he's he's a really stubborn guy uh even even into his adulthood he's really much like headstrong and motivated which is like that that's kind of the thing with invincible is like the invincibility is not a physical thing it that part is ironic but more so it was like mental fortitude to never stop and, and to not really give up um but as a result it's kind of it's also to his detriment so like he'll if he believes he's making the right decision then he'll go all the way into it and you see the seeds of that here with him as a teenager in high school but as a result it also can kind of be damaging to his relationship because of his stubbornness and willingness to not change uh, but yeah it's a phenomenal show uh great characters great adaptation i think it's good that they're uh condensing and moving some things around uh the race swapping doesn't really bother me i'm pretty ambivalent to this at this point uh they do hate redheads evidently you're you're, you're dropping like flies but it doesn't mean anything to me i'm black i'm looking for work so um you know i like the show it's a it, no strike that i love the show because I just bought merch from fucking Skybound <laughs> this past week. They have Invincible shirts, and, I, you know, they got costumes for, like, 50 bucks. I'm like, yeah, I'm probably going to a con as Invincible sometime this year. Um, but, yeah, great show. If you haven't watched it, absolutely give it a watch. Absolutely purchase the comic and read it. It's a phenomenal series. Um, it, it's interesting for me to realize that two of my favorite comics of all time have both come from uh, Image, uh, Saga, and now Invincible. I believe that Invincible is the Hunter Hunter of superhero comics. So, and I said what I said, and I meant that shit. But yeah, it's a fantastic show. Uh, Amber is not wrong. You, <laughs> Amber is not wrong. You, you just hate teenagers um, and, and won't acknowledge that they do stupid shit. So, is that all for superhero stuff? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, we got TV, TV, movie, movie. Okay. So two TV reviews, two movie reviews, and then I will toodle-loo out of here. So first thing, let's talk about uh, Yasuke. Yasuke come out on, came out on Netflix finally and kind of got mixed reception in the blurred community from what I can see. Uh, I watched it in, you know, six episodes. It, it, it takes about a day. Um, and, you know, full spoilery thoughts, not much to spoil. Um, I think a lot of people, let me, let me add this disclaimer. I think a lot of people uh, have been kind of misconstrued into what this show is. Um, I think a lot of people expected it to be a historical fiction adaptation of the life and times of Yasuke, the, the African samurai. Um, so when, when the anime was announced and, and LaShawn Thomas was, you know, coming on as producer and everything, I think later, this is like 2019, either earlier or later that year, it was also announced that Chadwick Boseman was supposed to play him in an adaptation. That one was supposed to be the more historical one. This one is a little bit more high fantasy. I think the problem is since this is the first time we've really heard about him in the public eye, there's the first real public exposure. Um... It's a high fantasy anime, like traditional anime. And I think that kind of rubs people the wrong way because a lot of people were kind of using that as a springboard to learn more about the historical figure, which apparently not a crazy amount is known about him, which is unfortunate um, because, you know, not much was documented. But with that uh, kind of being said, um, how did how did I like it? Uh, I think it's solid. Uh, LaShawn Thomas is definitely doing his thing with the show. Um, you know, I think, Ma I think MAPPA did the animation for it. So MAPPA did a, a solid job with, uh, animating it. Uh, I think Lakeith Stanfield's performance is actually pretty darn good. A lot of people didn't like him. I actually was surprised at how engaged I was with him, his acting, because I was worried that I was just going to hear Lakeith Stanfield as I hear him in every other role. Uh, not saying he's a bad actor. Uh, I do think he can very much embody the characters he plays. And I think it's definitely the case where that happens, but he also has a very 
uh, he has a voice where I can very much tell it's him. In this case, you know, seeing him play both a young and matured character uh, and, a, and a very solemn one at that, uh, I think he did an exceptional job uh, with the way his, his direction was handled. Now, with that said, as far as the story goes, I do, there, there are some elements that kind of were unnecessary. Like the fantastical elements of it, um, not that they didn't have a purpose, but in terms of like narratively, they didn't, the, the direction that LaShawn and Flylo took this didn't really have to be there. Um, you still could have had a great anime with great action and great fights without the including of like the way, the Russian werebear and the robot and the magic priest and, and the little magic girl. Um, you know, like the, the high fantasy elements I'd argue are probably because they're predictable. I think it also kind of makes them the most forgettable and it's kind of to the show's detriment, I would say, because Yasuke himself, I believe is a rather interesting character. It, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a, uh, Afro samurai or samurai shampoo in terms of him being like old and seasoned and reserved and kind of trying to mind him business, him business, his business while uh, people come into town. Like, I think you still could have done a, you could have done a simple narrative of, you know, him protecting this little girl that's being hunted by a priest because he believes she has magic powers. Um, and then maybe it turns out she doesn't, you know, maybe he's just a crazy guy, but you didn't need the mad, like the magical zombies. Like, I think the opening is actually pretty solid of him serving under Lord, uh, Nobunaga. I believe it's Nobunaga. Um, and, and how he kills himself in front of Yasuke. Uh, I think, you know, seeing, seeing Yasuke be bought and them discovering that melanin doesn't wash off. I thought that was actually a funny scene. Um, yeah, it it's it's it, I'd say if you have time, you know, a couple hours to kill, give it a watch and, and form your own opinion. I don't think it's a bad show. I think it's just very very it's not going to blow expectations. And I think that's the problem. Uh I have a video on my channel uh called The Photograph in the Space for Black Mediocrity and I do think that in the realm of arts and entertainment, especially when you're trying to be a pioneer of something. Um, there's a high expectation when you're, there's a higher expectation for quality when you're a person of color and more specifically as a, as a black person. I think just because as critics, we can be very, very, very critical uh, of, uh, you know, we can be a very, very judgmental group, not to say that we aren't open-minded to stuff, but the spectrum for that is very different. Case in point, if you've ever seen a crowd at Def Jam or the crowds at uh, Showtime at the Apollo, you know, those are very polarized groups. Um, and, and I'm on the uh, AGOBN group on Facebook, you know, Planet uh, Edge uh, You know, the, the blur, the, one of the biggest blurred groups on the platform, if not the biggest. And, and I remember a lot of discussion was being had about that. Uh, and and uh, I'm very much inclined to agree. Like, I like. I like what LaShawn Thomas is trying to do. I still need to finish Cannon Busters. I'm still mad because I haven't finished it because I'm supposed to be watching with a friend. So I'll finish it. One day I'll finish it. But, you know, Cannon Busters, I think, works a little bit better than Yasuke does because there's mystery, there's intrigue, there's a lot of world building. Um, I think the characters are very engaging in that show. Yasuke, you know, like, if they, if they went back and did a season there was more so a direct historical adaptation of like his life life. I think that'd be pretty good. Or, or his life is like training a new generation of samurai and just getting away from like the mech and the magic stuff, getting away from the, the tropey anime concepts. Um, and, and I'm sure that's maybe something that he wanted to do is kind of have this mix of, of historical fiction and fantasy. I just don't know if it blended as successful as he wanted, wanted it to. So it's, it was definitely ambitious. Um, but other than that, you know, the music in the show, fucking beautiful. Oh, my God. Oh, the opening theme being sung by Thundercat is it's magical. It's, it's dreamy. It's, it's wondrous. It's, it's almost psychedelic. It's beautiful. And, and Flylo's production in the, in the music of the show is phenomenal. You know, he, he don't miss. Flying Lotus don't fucking miss. 
Um, so if anything, watch the at least listen to the music. It's such a beautiful score. Um, but yeah, it's it's okay. It's it's an all right show. Um, it's not like a high recommendation, but it's like you know if you got it's it's six episodes, thirty minutes each. If you got a couple hours to kill, give it a watch and, and see what you think. Um, keep it on anime. So I've been watching a couple different shows. So Demon Slayer, uh, Kimisu no Yaiba. Uh, is is that what it's called? Uh, well, I wa- I watched Demon Slayer too. That was the other that was the other anime that I watched in the past month. Uh, cause just because everybody's been saying it's like, oh, bro, have you seen Demon Slayer? Oh, it's so good. Oh man, you gonna go crazy, son? Uh, I thought it was all right. <laughs> I'm definitely in a differing opinion of I'm not like crazy about it. Uh, I'm definitely in. I'm interested in it. Because what I really I marathon the show after I finished Invincible just so I could um really just so I could see the movie uh Mugen Train I was more so interested in that it, it just because everyone's like oh man it's being dubbed and it's going in theaters and you know an anime movie going to theaters I'm definitely it definitely has my attention uh, but the show itself it's not a it's it's not uh huh okay sorry I'm I'm looking up some some demon slayer stuff but uh yeah kimisu no yaiba um yaiba yaiba but demon slayer is good it has engaging characters my favorite of the trio is probably uh inosuke i really like uh inosuke i think he's really i think he's really funny he's inosuke is what bakugo is supposed to be in terms of a character like a likable hot-headed douchebag but also a little bit of a rival to the main character and and let me say another thing um is it what is damn it, what's the main character's name so here's the one thing i will say the characters are memorable but i cannot remember their damn names for the life of me i can remember you know conan Adagawa, yusuke Urameshi, but i cannot remember damn ta ta ta, ta uh Tanuchi to Tan- what is this bitch's name? Oh my god. What are their fucking names? I can't remember their names. Wikipedia is not my friend right now. Tanjiro. God. Tan- Tan- Tangerine. Um Yeah. I think I think Tanjiro has interesting motivations. I think he's actually a, a solid character. Um he does kind of fit the traditional shonen anime boy uh but he's a, he's a little bit more headstrong and i like the fact that you do see him grow and not so much humbled but he's he's very rational in his thoughts i can i can follow him when he thinks and he's very very competent which is nice um but i believe that what i was gonna say is that tanjiro has the voice that deku should have had their voices should have been switched so Inosuke and Bakugo's character should be switched. And in terms of dub, I'm talking about dub, not subs here. Because um, I like to listen to shows in my own language. Thank you. But dub voices, Tanjiro's voice and Deku's voice should have definitely been switched. Because Deku needs some fucking bass in his voice, man. Damn. I love Deku as a character. He needs some damn bass in his voice. But, you know, going back to Demon Slayer. Uh, I, think it, I think it's a good show. I think it's it's simple i think the fact that it's ended already kind of works to its benefit so now they kind of have a good streamline of like where the story starts where the story ends um so i think it's good i i do actually recommend it pretty highly i think the 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 animation is pretty damn good i haven't i've haven't really had any issues with that uh smart interesting characters it's just like I don't really have like honestly my favorite character is actually Sparrow, uh, Zenitsu Sparrow, and and I, I must say it I can't stand Zenitsu. I re- okay regular Zenitsu, um you know Zenitsu when he's calm and not screaming and crying all the time, he's cool. He's really cool when he's quiet, and, and calculated. You know that that uh mini arc in the forest with all the spider demons and him kind of trying to recover from the poison um really really cool so when he's quiet he's cool but yeah my favorite character in the show is actually uh uh zenitsu sparrow his his hunting crow which is a sparrow 
I really like that. I, I like the bird. Bird makes me laugh. Uh, Nesco is cool. Sparrow is cool. Inosuke is cool. Um, every everybody with part of their face covered or or the non humans. Uh, I think it has a very interesting long term villain of hyper feminine Michael Jackson. Uh, I think the high ranking demon slayers or what what are they called the what are their ass the the oh my god can't remember anything uh, the Hashira the Hashira are cool uh oh okay that is Johnny Bob <coughs> the Hashira I think are actually pretty cool they have really nice designs not to say that the main characters don't they're they're very distinct in their own right but. The Hashira have, like, very striking designs uh, that match their personality, so I think that's another great thing. But with, you know, and I'm very curious to see where their storyline is going to go with the rest of the Hashira following the movie, where Rengoku probably became one of my favorite characters. And I'm not going to spoil the movie, but I think the movie is great. I think I like the movie more than the show. Um, or sorry, I should say, I think I like the movie more than the first season because the movie's canon and the movie does some kind of impressive in man to managing to truncate an entire arc, uh, essentially to a two hour extended episode special with a, with a bigger budget and it uses its money. Well, uh, it was, it was engaging. Um, the sequences fit with the characters. Uh, I, I, Understood their motivations. I I initially so the reason, you know, the, the weird thing is when I when I saw everybody talking about the show, there's this cosplayer, Alley Cat cosplay. She did a cosplay of uh Rengoku. So every time I see Rengoku, I think of her. Uh shout outs to her. She's very, very nice. Um but that's kind of my the image I had, and that was kind of pushing me to get the episode. I'm like, all right, when am I gonna meet this fucking yellow haired, big eyed guy, this bug eyed, yellow fire dude? Who is this guy? Um, and a lot of the movie winds up focusing on on him, and and his fights and his backstory. And I think he's a really interesting, compelling character. A lot of people were like, oh, I was crying in the theater. Oh man, this movie got me in my feelings. Um, it it, it didn't get me, but I, I understand why if you're like really invested in the character. But I wound up really coming out of the movie having a lot of respect for Ringo. I think he's a really cool character, and and I'm hoping we see more of the Hashira as well as the uh, the demons that show up in that. So yeah, uh, if anything, I recommend watching the show just to watch the movie. And, and, and now uh, I'm definitely gonna gonna keep an eye out for what they do with season two, which I, I believe is so we got Kamitsu no Yaiba in season one. Then we have Demon Train or not Demon Train. Mugen Train as a season two. And then the next season is what's the next season called? I think my internet stops so I have to start again. Uh Kamitsu no Yaiba, I think is the next gonna be and they also have a video game coming out, so I might actually get the game like that. I'm, I'm definitely, uh, I'm in, I'm in it now. I'm in the thick of it now. So hopefully the game is good. So yeah, that was Demon Slayer. And what are the other two? Speaking of movies, what are the other movies we have to talk about today? Uh yes, do 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 Mortal Kombat. Uh, okay. Um. Let's see. So. Mortal Kombat. Let's talk about it. It's combat time. Uh, Mortal Kombat I thought was good. Not, not you know, as, as time went on, I understood a lot of the criticisms and everything, and some stuff could have been done better. Uh, I will do, this will be a, a spoiler review of that, and I will get into spoiler review of combat, but I thought it was good, man. You know, it was fun. Uh, I will say, I think everybody agreed that the Scorpion and Sub-Zero stuff was perfect. No, it was flawless victory on that one. Uh, Cole, unnecessary character. Uh, Luke, DC Luke, said what they should have done is, uh, I think he was the one that said in one of our group chats, was saying that why didn't the movie follow Sonya? And it immediately clicked what the plot should have been. It should have been, oh, yeah, 
They should have just been following Sonya trying to get the mark so she could participate in Mortal Kombat and help save the world and, Dra and Jax. You know, her trying to work with Jax to find a competitor to get the mark. Maybe she gets from Reptile. Yeah, she should have been the one to fight Reptile. Uh, also, man, I hate that they killed Reptile and Mylena. God damn it. I, ho I hope uh, the actress comes back as uh, Kitana in the sequel. I hope it gets a sequel. I will say, you know, with this movie, I'm definitely invested in the universe and to see where these characters go. I thought, I thought the fatalities were solid. N Nitara definitely gets probably the best one. Uh, the acting was okay. Effects were solid. Uh, a couple weird green screen shots. You could, you could definitely tell this movie had like uh, a lower budget, but I still think it, it accomplished most of what it set out to do. And, and uh, a lot of people were complained that Johnny Cage was there. Johnny Cage wasn't there. Uh, but you got kind of Kano filling that role. So I thought if they if they had Cage in there, it probably would have oversaturated it. But yeah, Cole had no reason to exist, especially for a man who got his ass beat basically the entire movie. They, they shouldn't have. Like, he was winning his MMA fight when we see him at the beginning and then just manages to lose. I think it it would have been more interesting if it shows him like throwing if before him he was supposed to throw the fight, which I thought was what they were setting up. But no. Um so for a movie that's like right under two hours, it accomplishes what I what I wanted it to. Um people are like Jor uh, Goro was jobbing, I'm like, Yeah, sure. Yeah, probably was. Um But if you want a, a Mortal Kombat movie that as a as a person that just knows of the game thinks is cool, uh I liked Scorpion's Scorpion's Revenge. Both of them are, are, are on HBO. Well, Mortal Kombat was the first one. But uh, Scorpion's Revenge is on HBO Max. I think it's great. It, it feels like a combination of, of the 90s Mortal Kombat movie as well as basically, you know, a Scorpion side story, like the Scorpion elements of the live action. It, it feels like the best parts of a lot of uh, other stuff. Granted, I've also heard issues with that, but, you know, I still really like it, and it's a fantastic, gory, animated film. But as far as the live-action one is concerned, uh, yeah, Mylena should have had her mask. So I'm hoping that, you know, Katana has her mask, and that they, they get the, the actress is so nice, and, and I wish she had more to do. Um, I wish a lot of the actors had more to do. The, the acting uh, kind of hit or miss for me from, from a lot of people. Um, but I am glad to see Hiroyuki Sanada you know, just making it big here overseas because he's a he's a beautiful man and stupidly talented. God, what a handsome man! Uh, but yeah, my recommendation for Mortal Kombat: give it a watch. It's fun. It's it just feels like mindless, violent entertainment. And as someone that's not as involved in the fandom, it was fun for me. It, it it's the fun for me. That's my take on Mortal Kombat. Um, violence galore. Some stuff worked, some stuff didn't. And now, the last thing we'll talk about today is Zack Snyder put out a movie on Netflix called Army of the Dead, and the trailer did nothing for me. If you know me, no, I'm not a huge Zack Snyder fan. I liked Justice League. I liked ZSJL. Um, and that's really it from him that I've like really walked away with liking. Until today, <laughs> I gotta say, I think Army of the Dead really works. Uh, I think for this one, I'll be non Because I, I, I'll say it was up front. Should you see it? Yeah. If you have Netflix, give it a watch. Uh, it's about two and a half hours. Does it need to be? Probably not. I can't think of too many places where they could have cut stuff. But yeah, it... it I, I think that's definitely his crux, but here in this movie, like, I didn't, it, it felt like a different director. Like, I almost didn't believe he was the one directing it and writing it. That I thought the characters were, albeit stereotypical, they were engaging through their, through their actors and performances. I, I thought that was good. I thought the effects were very, very good uh, for the most part. You know, the tiger, you can tell it's definitely CGI, but. It wasn't anything that bothered me. Um, there and there's some uh, actor replacement regarding some like controversy that like 
work really, really well with Tikataro's character, if I recall. Um, most of the characters I'd say are engaging. The story is fun. Uh, I felt st- I actually felt tension. I felt stakes. I had genuine laughs. All of those were like pleasant surprise. I'm like sitting here talking to my. I was engaged. I was thoroughly engaged as the movie went on and on. Uh, the last thirty minutes just gets kind of nuts, and I'm like, wow. That's good. And you know, there's a moment in it that legitimately shocked me. Uh, all I'll say is a character dies after somebody steps off an elevator. I'm like, wow, holy shit. Okay, and I replayed it two times. I'm like, damn. All right, all right, movie. You got me. You got me with that one. I thought this was going one way, and it went another way. So, so I, I get, I give Zach, I give Zach all the praise. This is my favorite movie by him that that I've seen. Um, you know, between this, the DC, and all of his DC adaptations, I don't, I don't think Zach needs to ever go back to adaptations again. You know, every. Everything I've heard people praise Zach for, I saw in this movie for the first time. The way he handles action was good. Um, Dave Bautista's acting was very, very good in this movie. Props to that, man. He's he's come a, a long way from where he used to be. So uh, I think he's really going to start making a name for himself as, as not only a big action guy like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um uh, I think he had some really compelling emotional moments. He's 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 showcasing some range. Uh, honestly, the only character I didn't really like in this was Dave's. What well, his character is is it Todd, or something Sean or Todd or something. Uh, Dave Batista's character's daughter, just because the motivation. So she ends up joining the plot to help save a friend of hers, uh, who who goes into Vegas into zombie Vegas. Viva La Zombie. But that just the motivation for her to be doing what she did just felt flimsy. Well, not flimsy, but it it, it didn't seem strong enough for me to take it seriously. Because I'm watching it the whole time. I'm like, bitch, fuck them kids. You know? like. Um, but other than that, you know, I think it's fun. It's a fun time. It's enjoyable. I think you get, the pacing, I think, is really good good probably after after the opening the pacing i I say picks up a little bit um it has a really its opening sequence does i I don't think drag is the word but it does kind of go on that that's definitely something that could have been shortened up a little bit it, the the opening and what they're trying to build up with the, the tension of how you know things got so bad in jersey um it, i I'm, I'm interested in this world i know they have an anime prequel coming out so i'm definitely interested to see that but if they made a if they made a, a sequel a follow-up to this um set in mexico maybe that would be interesting i'd be interested to see that it, it, weirdly enough um aside from this essentially being Zack snyder's suicide squad with zombies and you'll see why if you watch the movie god damn um it kind of makes me think Zack might be a good fit for aliens Strangely enough, I think he could pull off an Aliens movie in a similar vein as this, which which would be a, a big surprise. Um, there's a couple... It, th- this movie's definitely just like a, a summer cash blockbuster type deal. So if it was like any any year before 2020 and 2021, you know, there'd definitely be like, a, oh man, it's July. You know, there's this new zombie flick about zombies running over Vegas. There's like a zombie tiger. I'd be like, yeah, check it out. That sounds insane. Let's watch it. You know, get the popcorn, get some, get some drinks, get some friends. It's a, it's fun. It's a fun movie. Um, the characters I, I say all have their, their, they're stereotypical, but their performances I think helps carry them to make them engaging and entertaining. I think everybody does a, a, a good job with that. Uh, Amari Hardwick. You know, really good job as his character, I believe. I think he, he my my favorite one was uh, actually a background, not a background, but like a, a, a secondary character. She, she grew on me really, really fast just through a sequence of, of one scene. And she, and it kept going and going and just her, her tenacity got me really, really rooting for her. So I wound up actually leaving this and having a favorite character. I'm like, wow, okay. But it's like, I, w- I want to see more of that person and her backstory. You know, how she got 
you know, in, in the position that she was in. Uh, her name starts with an R. It's not, I think it's Roswell, Roxwell, Roxanne. Um, I, I, have, I have a garbage mind. But she, she, she was actually my favorite. was one of the non-big names on the docket. Uh, then my least favorite, probably Dave Bautista's daughter, just because, you know, watching her motivation, I'm like, eh, eh. But it also has some, like, it has potential. It has sequel potential. It doesn't need a sequel, mind you. Um, but if they wanted to, I wouldn't have an issue. You, you got a little bit of wiggle room if you wanted to proceed. But there's also implication to be like, yeah, I can see how this, this could end based off of where it ended. And, and I know in some reviews, it's like, oh, the ending didn't make sense. It's like, well, uh, I, I, I have a theory. And it's just like, well, you know, mutation. Things change. Mutation is my explanation for how the ending kind of went down, how it did. Like some things, some things act, you know, a virus moves different in different levels. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, Army of the Dead is, is, I think it's good. Dare I say great. It's definitely my favorite Zack Snyder movie. Um, it's colorful. It's fun. It's funny. It's engaging. It's just like, it's, it's just a, it's just a good time. It's a good time. You know, there's some decisions that characters make that aren't the best. There's some characters that are obviously tropey. Uh, there's a couple things in terms of like costume design. I'm like, hey, you're going into a place with zombies. Why are your arms exposed? That seems a little dumb. But other than that, like that's probably the dumbest thing in this movie is that a lot of them are wearing like vests or they have long hair that can easily be grabbed. Um, they're not protecting their arms or neck. They're not trying to, uh, which is funny because there's a character in this movie uh, who does something to protect themselves and they keep firing and it doesn't work. And I'm like, wow, that's really smart. There's some, you know, the, the, the dumb in the smart moments kind of balance each other out. I would say, or somebody wears armor and you're like, wow, you thought ahead. Holy shit. Um, but yeah, army of the dead. I really like it, especially for a Zack Snyder movie. So that's, that's a lot of praise. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll come around on him as a director. I'm curious where his career goes if he does. He should. He should stick. I think he should stick with horror for a little bit. See where that takes. Him. You know, do some some auteur horror films. But um, yeah. Is that all we have for topics? Let me see. Because the only other thing that I've got going on is uh, I need to finish watching Coonskin for a uh, review I'm supposed to be doing. Rat Critic on his show, View A New, which, if you didn't hear, uh, I did guest on View A New for the discussion of Judas and the Black Messiah. Go give that a listen. I'll probably link that down in the log below if you want to listen to that. But yeah, check out his show, View A New, and his uh, other podcast, um, Going Off with, with Rat Critic and News. It's a good show. There would be music on that one. And View A New is his movie review. But yeah, with that. Being said, that's going to be the episode for this week. Hopefully not this month. Uh, I'll, I'll try and do better. I gotta see. Um, the, the biggest thing with the guys is just all of us getting our schedules together and just finding time where, you know, we're available and not having a bunch going on. We all have lives. We're all in different places. So, you know, got to keep playing it by ear. But I don't mind doing these solo shows. If my fork just fell. <laughs> But I don't mind doing these solo shows if you don't mind listening to them. But with that being said, I've been your host, Will, a.k.a. Will the Greatest. You can find me on my own social media, at Will the Greatest on Instagram, at Will the Greatest on YouTube. Watch my videos. I will be working on some new content. And yes, I have not given up on the modern Black 51. Go watch my review for Two Can Play That Game. And I probably need to start working on um, Antoine Fisher. That's the next one I got coming. But yeah, don't forget to like, yeah, sub subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications over there, but don't forget to like this show, follow this show, send comments to our Instagram, uh, or comment on our Instagram at Atlas Comics Elite. That is Atlas Comics Elite on Instagram, A-T-L-A-S Comics Elite. And uh, leave, leave comments for us, leave questions for us, us being me. 
and uh, follow the show and turn on your notifications so you can know when I upload new episodes. And with that said, I will leave you be to be great to one another. See you next time. Peace.